What do you think off the top of your head? What are some powerful words that are spoken in the Bible? You know, immediately I think you go to salvation. So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved. That's a good I mean, one. That, that, you go right to the salvation message because I think that's what we often think of as forgiveness. Well, I said let, let there, there be light. light. Let there but be light. you think about that, I mean, that was the beginning of the creation yes. where God started the whole thing, which led to the salvation. We want to believe that our husband is going to protect us and lead us. Yeah. And we put some trust out there and step in that direction, and then we find out. And sometimes they fail. God's not like that. Nope. Yeah. You know, you step out and you feel, hey, yeah, he's got me. Now, here, here's the phrase, I am with I'm Chuck Tate, and here at Fellowship of Believers, we encourage families, strengthen marriages, and edify the body of Christ. I'm Larry Grimm. We also promote biblical doctrine in a fun and engaging way. And I'm Sarah. And if it's Christian, we're talking about it. This is the Mike Charleston Show. All right. All right. Well, welcome to another show of the Mike Charleston Show here. We got Larry Grimm and and Chuck Tate over here. And I'm joined with my wife. I'm here. Sarah. Yeah, we should have an extra applause for that one, Joshua. And Joshua's on the board over there. <laughs> so today's going to be a little bit different. We're not going to have a... There, well, he gets That's the screams. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the young ladies. So the... Um, um, this one's not going to be like a bunch of questions or whatever. I, obviously, if you're listening to this, you see the title already. Uh, most powerful words are powerful words, uh, influential words that God has spoken. And let me ask you guys real quick. Uh, I gave you a little heads yeah, up, like did. five yeah. seconds here. <laughs> yeah. um, what do you think off the off the top of your head? You obviously see the subject matter uh, and notes and things like that. But what are you? What are some powerful words that are spoken in the Bible that you can think of off the top of your head? You know, immediately I think you go to salvation. So I, I'm sorry, I'm not going to steal yours. No, <laughs> no it, well, it wasn't mine. It was my dad's. <laughs> it was so your dad. Go dad. For it. Yeah, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved. That's a good I mean, one. That, that, you go right to the salvation message because I think that's what we often think of as forgiveness. Yeah. 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 Well, I said when we talked about this just a minute ago was... Let, Let there be, be light. light. Let there but be light. But you think about that. I mean, that was the beginning of the creation yes. where God, so that I, he started the whole thing, which led to the salvation. And, and you'd have to know Larry's answer would be from Genesis. From Genesis. Well, yeah. Yeah. In the garden, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, well, this was, I preached this uh, at our camp like three years ago. And in, in this one, really, I got the idea from a guy I was listening to at a homeschool conference a while back. And as I really thought about it all, it, it really was like, wow, this is really incredible. I never really thought about like important things that God has said. And when you do think about it, you probably think, well, I love you is going to be up there. Right. You know, like, is this hey. Is a kissing book? And it's not. Yeah. No. <laughs> and, and so, like, I love you is going to be, like, God loves us, right? And, and so that is what you would think. But you'd be shocked to find out that, like, in the Old Testament, it only shows up, like, twice. Right. That yeah. he says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Uh, and the other time was in Isaiah or something well, like that. And that wasn't to an individual. Right. That was to the nation of Israel. Sure, right. So, but um, in the Old Testament, obviously, it's full of, right. like, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and there's a lot of other love passages. But this one, I think, is a theme, and kind of means the same thing as love, Is uh, and we'll tie that together later. But this one is from the very beginning to the very end, and all through the middle, uh I think this this these words and this phrase, I guess, is one of the most powerful things that God has spoken to, and actually would change your life, change your family's yeah. life, uh, yeah. change your marriage in in some ways, uh, if you really, 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 really believe this. And so, well, and these words empowered all these people that we're going to go through and all, many others to yes. do the things that they did. Well, that's why we call it motivating words too because you'll find out as we read these passages and what God said to these people, it motivated them to do something and and why. And we'll talk about that. But first, let's go to Hebrews chapter 1, 1 and 2 because this is kind of the, the passage that we're going to tie the whole scriptures together. And you'll, you'll see why in just a second. 
Okay, it says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Now, that's a great passage. Mm-hmm. Now, were you tempted to sing it? I was. Okay, because yeah. <laughs> they memorized this passage and they sang it. But anyway, yeah. so in this passage here, he, he's, Hebrews is starting out uh, with this... Um, He's laying out the foundation, and right from the very beginning, at a sundry times, a diverse manner. So, in, in many times past, in many different ways, God has spoken to us uh, through what? He's spoken through us, to us through the fathers, through the prophets, and even through uh, His Son, Jesus. And in a different translation, it doesn't say spoken uh, unto us by His Son. It's actually through His Son. And, 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 and they're about basically about the same, but there is a subtle difference, yeah. you know. But it's, uh, but through, so that's what we're going to be going through. That's kind of the outline. They gave us an outline, you know. Yeah, Paul didn't know right. it. But uh, so the fathers, from the very beginning, the fathers, and then... The prophets, and then even in Jesus' name. So, Chuck, do you uh, should we reveal what the phrase is right well, now? Well, I was going to ask you. We go now. Is it, what did he say? Uh, what did he say? Okay. Well, what is it? How about we read the first one, see if you can pick it out yeah, here. Yeah, that good. And um, uh, to the father. So Abraham. We start off with Abraham in Genesis twelve one. Okay, it says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Now, it's not in this passage necessarily. It's kind of close, but something got Abraham motivated, right? So mm-hmm. what got what got Abraham motivated? God told him, God spoke to him. Right. And what was the last part there? Um, the last part was a promise of a land that he was going to show him. Well, that, he yeah, says he's, he's going to show, show him something. Right. He's yeah. going to show him. So he didn't know where to go. He didn't know how the plan was, but he said, I will show you. So the, the, well, the words aren't exactly there yet, but they're coming. They're coming. Yep. They're coming. So then we have Isaac in Genesis 26, 24. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee, and will bless thee, and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. So Abraham believed God, right? Yep. And he was faithful. And so now Isaac comes along, and he's the, the, the heir of, of Abraham, and right. God appears to him and says, I'm the God of your father, Abraham, and, um, and fear not, for I am with thee. Now, here, here's the phrase. It says it many times in the Bible. You can search how many times this, this is uh, appears in the scriptures. It's really fascinating. That I am with thee. That's the phrase, right? Right. Yeah. I am with you. I am with thee. So he was with Abraham. He was with um, Isaac. And so Isaac is, he's, he's, he was fearful. And he said, fear not. Yeah. And I am with you. So, oh, that's, that's, a, that's a good motivator right yeah. there. Yeah. And if I want someone to be with me, I want it to be God. Right, absolutely. Right. Yeah. That sounds, sounds good. Yeah. Um, okay, what else we has? Um, notice when God said he would be with them, it's to do something. So all these stories that we're going to hear, they're, they're getting ready to do something. God calls them out. And, and let's be fair, this is the Bible. It, you know, he's not just, we're not having these conversations on the couch. Right. You know, yeah. just like, hey, <laughs> I'm with you. They are actually going to do something. He tells them to do something that's going to be hard to do or yeah. kind of bizarre. And he says, don't worry. I'm with you in this in this process. Okay. So what do we have? Who's next? Next we have Jacob. Jacob. Genesis 31, 3 says, And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. Okay. So this one doesn't sound like super special. Like what's the action he wants him to do? Just go back to the land, right? <laughs> so, But well, he still says... I will be with you. Right. And well, like, there's obviously a lot more. That's there's a whole bunch more right. of Jacob's yeah, life. Yeah. Right. Go and, read and, Genesis. You can see the story. But to go back and uh, um, back to his father's land, and he is going to be with him in whatever he does. And we can you can read the stories about what Jacob did. Jacob was a little bit of a shyster. A little bit, yeah. A little bit. Well, so it's actually kind of scary for him to go back because yeah. he was going back to face Esau. Yes, true. Who he had kind of tricked, and there was it was yes. not really good. And so, but God says, "Go back, and I'm going to be with you." And yeah. so, when God says, "I'll be with you," calms him down, and he says, "Hey, okay, all's good. God's with me, right?" Yeah. Okay. So we're moving pretty quickly through the Old Testament, but that's all right. Who do we have next? 
Next is Joseph, Genesis 48, 21. And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, uh, Israel being Jacob, right? Behold, I die, but God shall be with you and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Now, there's more to Joseph here, too, because there's a couple verses you took out. The um, Even while he was in prison, even while he was, God still said, I'm going to be with you. Yeah. And and he was. Yeah. And he he prospered in, in the prison. And he, he stood tall. And God was with him. He rose to power to the second most powerful person in the known world. Yeah. You know, be, uh, he was the Pharaoh's right-hand man and helped save Israel uh, because of that. And he, he blessed him. And uh, so God was with Joseph, too. And Joseph is obviously a picture of Christ. And so, okay, we are moving right along. And what do we have next? Next is Moses, Exodus 3.12. And he said, certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. Okay, once again, you took out another note here. <laughs> so, And I don't know the verse off the top of my head. And maybe you have it down in the notes later. Mm-hmm. But Moses, so we all know the story of Moses, right? Right. Yeah. So, this is God this, talking to him on the mountain by the burning bush, right? Well, yeah. yeah. And Calling this is a big one. Not only here, but in delivering the people of Egypt, yeah. bringing them across the river, and giving them the law. There's a lot that a lot goes there. on with Moses. And yet, um, uh, he says, uh, this is specifically the story of the burning bush. Yeah. Yeah. Right he says, yeah. He says okay. he's going to bring it back to, you'll serve God on this mountain. Now it is yeah you took out that note. Um, the 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 other thing that I liked about Moses was there was a certain story and I and it, I wish it was in the notes here but there is there is um, a certain thing that the Lord told him to go and he would be with him and he said if you do not go with us I do not want to go. And I'm like, that's a powerful verse. Yeah. Right. To me, that should be our anthem where like, hey, it, I'm not going on my own here. Yeah. Right? I want to, if, if God's with us, then let's go. And now, you know, you can apply that to your life and we're not here to, you know, just apply verses to our lives. But how many times have, have you know, God told us something or showed us something, maybe not spoken vocally to us or whatever, but we feel like God wants us to do something and we still get nervous about yeah. doing it. I know I have. Yeah, I know Sarah's yeah, probably that's... pointing at me right now, you know, <laughs> when we, we're told, to, let's do the camp. And I always go like, oh, but no one's going to show up. Oh, <laughs> we don't, we're not going to have this or, oh, we're going to run out of money. And and uh, she's like, well, if, if God told us and one, he wants us to do this, he'll be with us. Yeah. And like Moses, yeah. if he's not with us, then I don't want to do it, you know? Right. So it, it's still a scary thing. Can be. Yeah. I, well, I mean, you think about it. Like Moses, he's talking, God is actually talking to him at a burning bush. And then he does a few miracles there, like turns his hand to the leprosy yep. And, yep. and then turns a rod into a snake and all that. And yet Moses is like, you want me to go back? I, I left there because I was running because I killed an Egyptian. I murdered somebody. And now I'm going to, you want me to go back there? And are, are you sure you're going to be with me? You know, right. it's, so sometimes these things God asks us to do, they, they are a little bit scary. Yeah. But that's kind of where are you going to trust him? Is That's where faith comes in and says. Right. That's, that's, the, you know, that's what I was going to ask you. Know, what's, what's our part of that? Or Moses, Jacob, sure. Joseph. What was their part? God says, if you will do this, I'll be with you. Yeah. Their part was they needed to believe God. Yep. They had to, and then step out on faith. Yeah. Yeah, they, they the, had to walk. And it's act. still faith, man. Yeah, yeah. And because some of the things they asked him to do were crazy. You know, like, you want me to go back to Egypt and what? You know, the, the place that I was kicked out of? Yeah, you confront Pharaoh, the king. So at uh, this point, we have, uh, we're, we're reading verses that talk about that God is with us. And people are like, yeah, yeah, we, we know that God is with us and all that. But I want you, we're trying to bury it home to, to like, this is the whole point. And, and so from Adam, you know, when God was walking with him to the cool of the day, and then there, something happened, right? Something happened that separated yeah. that relationship. Yeah. What happened? 
sin. Sin, sin. Yeah. right. Sin happened. And God still made a way because, why? Because he wanted to be yeah. with his people. Now, I think this is at the heart of it, that God wants fellowship. And I find that fascinating. Right, that yeah. The, the God of the universe created us so he could have fellowship. Yeah, that was his original plan. That was that he, he created us as a being who had the ability to choose whether or not we wanted to fellowship with yes. him. Yes. That's that what is, he wanted. He wanted someone to choose to fellowship. And yeah. when they messed up, he even sacrificed innocent lambs, you know, in their place so that he could keep on having some kind of fellowship with him. And it was a little bit different because the blood of bulls and goats couldn't completely wipe away the right. stain. Because they weren't the ones who committed the sin. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So then uh, we get to the tabernacle. And Chuck was like, "What's? why do you have this tabernacle here? Yeah, what's well, a tabernacle? Right? <laughs> it's just this tabernacle. That's it's just all this tabernacle. <laughs> well, <laughs> because, because the tabernacle was the first real physical place that God was like, I am going to dwell with you here. Sure, he walked with Adam in the cool of the day, and then sin came in. And yes, he was appeased, I guess you could say, by the the blood sacrifices and all this. But the tabernacle in the wilderness was like the first place. You had the fire by day, a fire by night and the cloud by day, and that led them. And right. they knew that God was with them. Well, now you have the tabernacle, and it's like, hey, God is in this place. In fact, when when Moses sets it up, and and uh, Joshua goes in, in and I, I love this. This is why I named Joshua, Joshua, my son Joshua. I love Joshua. And he was one that Moses would go in there and be in the presence of God. And Joshua says he lingered in the presence of God. And yeah. no wonder he was the one to lead out, and he was a picture of Christ too, but he was the one to lead the people into the promised land. And that is where the presence of God, now we take that for granted because like we we have the Holy Spirit. You know, the presence of God, we, we, can, right. we can come together and right. the presence of God is with us, but they actually had to go to this place yes. and and get the, 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 yeah. the presence of God. And, and, it's, it, and the term is so specific. That's why I love the term tabernacle because it really exactly what it means. I'll, I'm with you. Yes. I'm dwelling, dwelling with you. With That's you. what tabernacle yeah. means. Yes. He wants to tabernacle with us, to dwell with us. That is fascinating. I, I don't know yeah. how we can get around that, that that God wants to be with worthless sinners, yeah. <laughs> and and he wants the communion and, and fellowship with him, and so he's going, he's bending over backwards to meet with us yeah. and to be with us. Well, so, another interesting thing about the tabernacles, after it was constructed, it's and you read the book of Numbers, it says... That when the cloud was there, they stayed. Yes. When the cloud moved, they'd pack up and yes. follow it. Yes. So God was not only dwelling with them, but he was also leading them. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And yeah. And that, that would have been like, hey, man, I'm going with him. Yeah. Kind of like Moses. I'm not leaving unless you yeah. leave. <laughs> so then we move on to like uh, Gideon, and Gideon is not yes. quite... You skipped Joshua. Oh, well, okay. Oh, what was Joshua's? I thought we did Joshua's. Yeah, okay. I mean, okay. you mentioned him. Oh, yeah, we talked Joshua. Okay, when Joshua. Took over... From Moses. Yes. This is in Joshua, Joshua 1, chapter. 5. Yeah. yeah, so it's at the beginning of Joshua. He says, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Wow. And so that's a promise to Joshua. Yeah. And God is a, a God of covenants, God of promises. And when he promises something, you can count on Deliver. it. Well, yeah. Let's talk about an outline right here. You got the three points, like a Baptist sermon. Yes. <laughs> It was, uh, I will be with thee, I will not fail thee, and I will not forsake thee. Yeah. So, and we see that in Joshua's life. I mean, oh, yeah. That's well, that's why, like you were saying that some of these people, what they had to do is kind of hard, but I don't know. I feel like a lot of these people, I think, got it, that they understood that God was with them. And I think that the confidence just grew because they knew that God was with them. It's kind of like, you know, in marriage when you feel like your wife has your back and you feel like you can do more. But I mean, that's just on a small scale. But when you think of God who you just saw part the waters and you just see, you know, you just saw do all these things and you're like, oh, he's with me? Yeah. Like, I mean, Joshua, and then we move on to some of these other people. I'm like, I think they had confidence because they actually believed that. Well, that's the thing. And that's the key thing is when you really believe what we believe, you know, the scriptures, and that motivates us yeah. to action and to really believe what God says. And so, uh, uh, when when Joshua, 
hears that there's a, a promised land and he's got to go spy out the land and he's like guys we could take this yeah now yeah. the other guys are fearful right but do they believe that god's with them no. he believed that yeah. god was with them and that like hey if god is for us who could be against us we are going to take this land and they did they had to wait a little bit but right. uh, yeah. they, they, they did uh okay well, the so the same is true in when we, what you're bringing out sarah is in relationships with each other it's the whole concept or idea of trust. Right. Yeah. You know, we we want to believe that um, our wife is going to support us and be with us. We want to believe that our husband is going to protect us and lead us. Yeah. And we put some trust out there and step in that direction, and then we find out. Yeah. And, right. Yeah. You know, with, and sometimes with, they fail. Sometimes they fail. <laughs> right. yeah. Guy's not like that. Nope. You no. know, you step out and you feel, hey, yeah, he's got me. Right. Yeah. And then let you be able to step a little farther. And you can continue yeah. to to trust in him because he's not going to forsake you. He's not going to fail you. No, nope. yeah. where we may fail each other in different parts of our life, even if we may try on our own and not hope to, still, you know, that trust in Christ, that trust in God, isn't going to fail. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. That's okay. So we're almost to the prophets here. So we got Gideon here. This is this is a you're like Gideon's one of the fathers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I threw him in here. Uh, Judges six sixteen. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee and Thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Okay, I, I feel like we're doing a lot of history lessons, and we don't have much time to to do all I know, this. But yeah, the, the, the context being that he had a, a small army to begin with, and the Midianites were bigger than them. Right. And God says, "Not nah, still too many. Yeah. Bring them down to three hundred. So he's like, "What? You know?" So he takes them down the river. Those that drank water like lap of water like a dog. Those people. Send them out. Well, it turned out that's 300. Yeah. And they won the war. And so he's like, I will be with you. So once again, okay, Lord. Yeah. (laughs) If you say Uh so. Okay, David. David. Oh, here we go. This is a famous one, right? Uh, Psalm 23. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And, and David wrote about this many times. He, is, he knows that God is with him. Right. Well, you saw that when he faced Goliath. Yep. And he said, you come to me with sword and spear, yeah. but I come to you. Right. Yes. He was motivated because he knew who God was and that he was going to be with him. So those were the fathers. So well, let's move on. Just okay. real quick with David. It's, it just shows how the theme, God wants to be with us, God, in spite of all David's failures, God still called him a man after his own heart. Yes. And Yep. Okay. So, so that's how God spoke to us through the fathers. Yes. Now the he spoke to us also by the prophets. Prophets. So we've we got a couple of prophets here, only a few. But let's go ahead with Jeremiah. Jeremiah 119, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. Now, this one, you, the context of Jeremiah, I mean, he just got told, you're not going to marry, you're not going to have any kids, the the nation of Israel is going to be taken oh, right. and, yeah. and going into Babylon, and they're going to fight against you, and they're going to they're gonna put you in a cistern, they're going to do all kinds of, but they will not prevail against you, and I am with you. And uh, that is uh, Jeremiah... I name my son Jeremiah because yeah. well, Jeremiah is my favorite prophet, and uh, it, it's it's the things that God asked him to do. He's probably like, no, I mean, this is where God dwells, the temple of the Lord, and you're going to destroy the temple of the Lord, and yet he's like, I'm going to be with you, yep. and uh, and he, he was okay. So then we have uh, I, uh, Israel, but in Isaiah, right? Yeah, Isaiah forty three four through five. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. So he's talking about Israel here. And here's one of the few verses that actually talk about love too. I have loved thee. And this is like the second time in the Old Testament, I think, and uh, that, they, that I loved you and I'm with you. So we can connect the two that being with someone and loving them is pretty much very much the same thing. Right. So if you don't want to be with someone, if you don't want to be with your spouse, you don't want to be with your kids, think about that. 
Do you really love yeah, them? Yeah, what are you saying to them? God us? has tolerated our sin. He has made a way where there was no way. He's, he's he made them sacrifice animals. He he made tabernacles. He he came down to these people and said, I want to be with you. Yeah. I want to tabernacle with you. I want to dwell with you. I want you to be my people. This is his heart. He wants someone to call him their God. Yeah. You know, and say, I, I you're my God. And and he wants to say, You're my people. And uh, so throughout all of history, this is is the, the case. And and so uh, think about that. If you are a parent right now and you are sick of your kids, <laughs> then maybe you need to question, do you really love them? And because you, if you love them, you will want to be with them. That is the heart of God, is love. God is love, and He wants to be with those that are His. That is His heart. So, okay, so that's the Old Testament. And what about, and the prophets, but this is even more fascinating. So now it's even in his name, Jesus. So, okay, we have Mary in the New Testament. We'll go with Mary. Luke one twenty eight, and the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Okay, once again, a crazy situation. She's a virgin. You're going to be with a child. Who's going to believe you, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's nobody. That's a tough one to ask somebody to to do. Yes, I mean, really. I mean, going back to being tough, it's like, oh, sure, you've had an angel appear to you and yep. tell you this. <laughs> yeah, we know how this works. <laughs> yes, right. And so she believed God, and she believed that uh, he not only. Uh, she was favored of God and that he was with her. And uh, that is important. And in fact, before we get to that, um, in that same, you know, your name is son Emmanuel in Isaiah uh, 9, uh, 9, 6. Nine, I think six? so, yeah. Right, where it says his name will be Emmanuel. And being interpreted means God, God with, with us. us. God with us. So even in his son, this is the concept, people, that Jesus wants, not Jesus, God, the Father, God, the Son, everything. Every, he, the, the Godhead wants yeah. to be with us, wants to fellowship with us. It's even in the Son's name, Jesus, yeah. Emmanuel, wants to be with us. God is with us now. So I'm like, that is fascinating that at every step along the way, it's like, don't you get it? I want to be with you. Well, not only that, but the what that God actually became a man, right. was born as every other person that was ever born. He was born the same way, you know, grew as a person, a man. And live like we do. Sure, sure. All because he wanted to restore that fellowship on a permanent basis. Yeah, absolutely. So it's like, yep. He has about, made a way at yeah. every stop, and he has made his intentions quite clear. Yeah, you know, he wants to be with us. You know, in that dating, you know, yeah, right. uh, yeah. like, what are your intentions? Do you like me? I think it's pretty clear he likes us. Yeah, like he yeah. wants us to be with him. Yeah. And like, what is our deal? Uh, okay, so then we have John fourteen sixteen. It says, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. So not only that, now, now when Jesus goes away, and uh, he says, I'm going to send you another comforter, the Holy Ghost, and he's going to be with you forever, and he's going to abide forever. So, yeah. there's your tabernacle forever, yeah. that we, the benefit that we get, that we can dwell with God at all times, yeah. that God is with us now. Right. Like, think about that as Christians. God is with us. Like, right now, he's with us. Yeah. Do we believe that? That's the question. You know, like, wow. We don't live yeah, it sometimes. I, I know. But yeah, that's a tough uh, one. You're, you're stepping on toes oh, here. Okay. <laughs> well, I didn't bring my steel toes shoes. <laughs> well, and that, you know, this helps with everyday life. You know, uh, one of my big heart cries, I uh, went through a Bible study. True, man. How old are you, Joshua? 18. 18. 18 years ago. And uh, went through a, a Bible study through going through Romans. And it changed my life. Changed yeah. my life forever. And one of the big focuses on that was in Romans 6, where it talks about how we're dead to sin and we're alive to God. Yeah. And at first, I focused on the dead to sin part because we all want to stop sinning. you know. Right, yeah. But as I matured in that, I'm like, I'm alive to God. Yeah, God wants to be with me, and I want to be with Him. This is awesome. Like, th there's nothing that's going to separate us. You know, this yeah. is awesome. So, the thing that will stop you from sinning is the truth. And here's the truth. God wants to be with you. 
Do you believe it? Do you believe that he set you free? Do you believe that he's walking with you? The devil wants to get you alone. Yeah. He wants you to isolate you, get you alone, and tempt you and say, no one is watching you. No one is with you right now. Go ahead and indulge in whatever you're doing. But God is with you. Yeah, God's watching. Yes. God. So if you believe the lie of Satan that he's, no one's watching, then uh, then you're going to indulge. But if you're motivated, like the, the most motivating words here, right, or yeah. the powerful words, that if I'm motivated that God has told me that I am freed from sin, if God has told me that he is with me, I'm going to be motivated to walk in that and be like, I don't think so, Satan. I know that my God is with me, and He's watching me, and yeah. He's watching every step, and uh, so He and and He says these things, and those things are true. What you say is not true at all. So that's motivation. Yeah. Oh, well, an interesting thing to think about when you talk about being alone and being isolated. When you think of predators in the wild, oh, yeah, like lions, what do they try to do? They try to isolate the, the young weak, and the weak, the, right? the young yeah. and the weak, or and the, the old and the weak. Yeah, <laughs> the weak. Well, the weak. Right. Right. The um, where is it? In is it Peter or James talks about the adversary walks about as a roaring uh, lion, yes, seeking yeah. whom he may devour, and that's that picture. Is he tries to get you isolated because it's easier to devour you? There's, yeah, it make you believe that right. God's not with you. Yeah, there's you and, don't have anybody there to protect you. You feel all alone. You're isolated. So then, yeah, it's easier to bring you down, and that's that's yeah. kind of what that verse means. And, sure, and, and so we have. Um, you know, this this works in everyday life. We talked about it already a little bit, but your wife, your kids, yeah. if you love them, you want to be with them. Mm-hmm. If you love God, you'll want to be with Him. And so many times we put God on the, the back burner and the, the shelf over here, and we just don't have time for God. Like I said, in, in dating terms, He's made His intentions quite clear. Right. Yeah. He, he yeah. wants us. He right. wants to be a part of us. He wants to be in our lives. He wants to fellowship with us. He wants to tabernacle with us. He wants to dwell with us. He wants to dwell with his people. He wants a people that will say, hey, you're my God. And he wants to say, I'm your people. And that's what he's done. Isn't right. that incredible? That is incredible. That is awesome. Yeah, you go and, back to the idea that, that Satan wants to separate. Yes. He's wanting to separate us from God, to pull us apart. And uh, it was reminded me of uh, Paul's encouragement to us. I had to look it up, Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, Amen. which is in Christ Jesus yeah, our Lord. That's awesome. Yeah. That is incredible. So. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, if you read the Bible and go through, like, kind of, we went quick through yes. the history of it. Very stuff. quickly. But <laughs> if you look at it, the end of it is kind of the same as the beginning. Yes. God wanted at the beginning people that wanted, that chose to follow him and wanted to be with him, like he wants to be with them. Right. At the end, it's the same thing. He he goes through this whole history of humanity wanting a people group right. of yeah. people that will that want to fellowship with him the same as he wants to fellowship with them and that's how the bible ends yes and it's and, and in love so we get caught up with love you know and and what love is in america we kind of get that confused sometimes with yeah. emotionalism and, and like, oh, I feel love. But love is actually a choice, it, it, yeah. you yes. know, where it says, love your spouse, love your mm-hmm. wife, love your husband. Well, I don't think it says love your husband, but love your wife. I have to choose to do that. Yes. I, I choose to show love. I choose yeah. to love. L- love isn't love if you don't have a choice. If there is yeah. no choice in the matter, there's no love. And so God chose to love us. Yeah. That's and he's bizarre, waiting for right? us. I know. That's a tough concept to think about. Is he he's waiting for us to respond to his lavish love on us. And are we going to choose to follow him and obey and be like, you know what? I believe what you say. I believe you. Yeah. And that's all he's looking for is just people to believe him. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And then he's made he's he's fixed everything else. Be like, okay, if you just believe what I've done for you, you can be called one of my children. And you'd be one of mine. And I find that very, very, very fascinating. From the very beginning yeah. to the very end, and at the very end, we, we know what's going to happen, that we're all going to be with him yeah. uh, up there in heaven. And forever, we're going to be with our Lord. And that's going to be awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's going to be those that want to be there. 
And it's so, it, we're going back to the Old Testament. How many times did God tell from Abraham through Joshua saying, you know, this land is prepared for you. It's ready. You just got to go. Yep. Yeah. And when they, when, um, Moses sent out the 12 spies, and only two came back and said, hey, yeah, God's with us. We can take this land. Yeah, they didn't and believe it. And the others it. didn't believe it. They, yep. they saw the people there, and they were afraid yep. rather than trust God. And that's that's kind of what faith yeah, is, they, is. They looked at the circumstances yeah. instead of putting the faith in God, being able to, to let them have it. Yeah, and that's where the motivating part of this comes from. If, if God tells us, shows us to do something. Now, sometimes we, we step out on our own. And we, we real quickly realize, oh, God wasn't yeah, in this, yeah, and right. I, I want God to be with me in this. Right. But He is with us, and He will guide and lead us. And when we do make those uh, errors, maybe maybe I wasn't supposed to do this. He's going to correct right. us. Yeah, he, he, sure. He's yeah. good to us. But man, he he just he's if he's with us, then nothing's going to stop us. You know. Now it doesn't mean that everything that we do works out. Right. right. You know. Sure. I'm not trying to come across as like this uh, prosperity teacher right. now. All of a sudden, well, like that's hey. the other thing is, it's never going to be an easy road. I mean, you look at Moses, his life, and dealing with the nation of the people of Israel and how much they complained and forgot God and all these things. And and he got frustrated. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's I one mean, of the reasons why he didn't make it to the promised land. Yeah. Was yeah. I mean, if you look at the examples that we just did, yeah. you know, in each, each circumstance, God says, I'll be with you, but I got this hard thing for you to do. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yes, and him being with us helps us to get through what he wants us to do yeah. and get through this life, which is, I mean, you're tempted by the flesh, the world, the devil. I mean, all these things are coming against us. Do you think that we might need God to be with us? I hope oh, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So well, that, that's well, we what, need him, but we also need to believe that he is. And yes. I think that's where the struggle is. I think most, probably most Christians don't really believe that, which is why, I mean, if you struggle in sin... You obviously don't believe he's with you because right. if he was, if you thought he was with you, you wouldn't be sinning. Struggling and sinning. And then I just think in in all of our Christian walk and everything that we think God wants us to do, it all becomes easy when we know he's with us. It's like easy as in like faith wise, but I, it's still like there might be some hard times with yeah, that, for you sure. know, where but 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 we're prepared. I would rather go with God than to go with other. Uh, others yeah. and be accepted by others. I want to be accepted by God. Right. I want yeah. Him to be pleasing and acceptable with with what I say and what I do. But uh, we have one last verse, and uh, what is this one? Hebrews thirteen five. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For He hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Okay, I forget why I put this in here, but um, I think it's because I will never, never leave, leave thee or forsake right, thee. Yeah. And, and that is a promise. Yeah. And once again, what are we motivated by? Do we really believe that God is with us? That's the question I want to ask out there if you're listening, if you're still listening, if you haven't shut us off yet. <laughs> uh, but if you if you're, if you're really are considering these things, and I'm not saying, you know, we, we said like, oh, you obviously don't believe that God is with you if you're struggling sin. Well, this is a motivator. Like, really think about it. Like, do you really believe that God God is with you because if you really do, you're going to walk after the Spirit. You're going to pursue God, yep. and you're not going to be distracted by those those the sin. You're not going to be focused on sin. You're going to be focused on on Christ yep. and knowing that He is with you. So we're not ever saying that oh, this is going to be sinless perfection now, right? <laughs> but if you are motivated by these words and what God says is true, and we believe that, yep. then He is with us every step of the way. So He knows when you how you treat your wife. He knows how you treat your kids. Yep. So Father, think about that as you're disciplining your, your child or ignoring your child or blessing your child. You know, God is with you and the kids are going to see that in you. They, do, do your kids think that God is with you? Do you believe that God is with you? You know, because that's what kind of separates people is Christians, God is with. Believers, God is with. Unbelievers, is God is not yeah. with. So he's not with them, but he's with us. So that is the separating line that that's how we know. Like he is with us. He's not with them. And that's that's tough. Yeah. And so that is that's one that these are one of those things that you get the mirror out and look at yourself right, so. and say, I believe these things. Do I really believe that God is with us? If you really believe that, it'll change your life forever. It really will change uh, your motivations and your, it'll change every relationship you have that know that God is truly with you. That's a humble, that's a, it's a, it's uh, convicting. 
Well, it is, but it's it's sobering <laughs> to think yeah. that God is with me at all times. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't always believe that. You know, no, yeah, I have to be reminded, <laughs> and uh, my wife has to remind me sometimes. Like, well, God said, and I'm like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, I mean, we we criticize, and I was earlier about the nation of Israel. You know, going through the with Moses yep. leaving Egypt and stuff. We're no different. Nope. We do the same thing. We see God do miracles, and we know He's with us. And then life gets hard, and we're like, "Well, where are you? Yeah, you know, <laughs> what have you done for me what? lately? <laughs> if only we could go back to Egypt. We the, had uh, <laughs> the leeks and the garlic. Well, yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. Some things never change. So anyway, any any last words? Any other uh, edification there for other people? Um, uh, God is with us, man. Yeah, that's right. That is. Uh, Fascinating, fascinating thing. So do your own study. There's a lot of other passages we, we yeah. passed up, but these were stories of the Bible. Notice how, go to the Hebrews 11, and every oh, story yeah. there, oh, yeah. God was with them, yeah. right? Yeah. All right. The Mike Charleston Show. This is a segment where we answer your questions. Let's go! All right, guys, we got an email. An email? Yeah, we got Sweet. an email. Yes, so we don't usually get these emails, but uh, Ethan emailed in, and sorry, Ethan, we didn't get it to the last week. He was, like, wondering, did you get yeah. my email? <laughs> <laughs> like, I did, but I'm kind of lazy at uh, returning the, the, the messages because I, I have it in my mind that we're going to do it. Uh, yeah. So this is for you, Ethan. Why don't you go ahead and read it, babe? I can't read that that font. Okay, it says, hello all. It's been a long time since I've emailed you. Yes, show. it has. Well, what's going on, man? <laughs> what you mentioned about the Lord's Supper in your last episode. Well, that wasn't the last episode. That was but a little one, while. Right. It, it's, yes. it, 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 it. it's an interesting perspective that I never really thought about. I think a lot of churches do the bread and juice or wafer chips and juice in a lot of churches today because those things are specifically mentioned in the Lord's Supper that have special meaning. The Bible didn't bother to detail the other food if there was other food then. Could you please explain your thoughts further on this? Yes, and then he says, uh, we'll, 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 we'll do that later. Okay. Um, so, yes, so the, it does focus on the bread and the wine. The bread that is broken for is, is his body. Right. His body. And, and the blood the is represented in the wine. Blood, right. Yeah. Okay. And that's so, the New Testament he's issued. Yeah. And, and actually, you do a study on the bread and wine. It shows up when the, when, um, uh, the angels come down to meet Abraham. Yep. They, they give some bread and wine. And so there is some significance yep. there. Uh, but they were eating a meal. Right. And it was instituted during the Passover, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah. So we actually do know what they were eating. Yeah. Right. 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 So if you know what the Passover meal was or is, then you know what they were eating during that that time frame. Roasted lamb with mm -hmm. a lot of bitter herbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had some of that the other night. Oh yeah, <laughs> no, that was really good. <laughs> so yeah, they, they definitely had lamb. I don't know exactly all the food off the top of my head that, yeah, that's, that, that's in a Passover. But if you look up Passover meals, and that is what they were eating. He he longed to eat the Passover for the, with them um, right before. He was crucified. Now there was a couple different Passovers, and yep. so it's anyway. We don't get in. We talked about that <laughs> at one point uh, during the, the that episode, but that is what was being ate. Now I'm not saying that at a church service we need to have lamb and right, all the right. accoutrement that is with the Lord's Supper, yeah. but I do think they need to eat. We need to eat together in some some I think form. Most or fashion. of what we get from the Lord's Supper they take from First Corinthians. Yes. So uh, where it just mentions the bread and the wine. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And that's fair. That's not a supper. I mean, I want to right. rehash what we all talked about. But. Right. It's not a supper, but to, to say we have the Lord's Supper, uh, what does that look like? We're just having bread and wine. They, they had the Passover meal. Right. If you want to have the Passover meal, then, then so be it. I know some people don't necessarily want to have communion every week, so if you have a couple of big meals, whatever. I, I just think that God's people need to eat together a lot more and right. fellowship yeah. in that, that process of it. But you actually had a Passover. You went to a Jewish... Oh, yeah, years ago, we actually got invited to a Messianic Jewish... Uh, Passover meal. Okay, so had the, you had a had lot the of actual the... seder plate that they, you know, that okay. they called it with all the, um, all the different pieces, and it actually walked you through uh, the symbolic meanings of sure. the Passover and when Christ instituted. So pretty neat. Yeah, yeah, it's something, yeah. It's something interesting to go go look up. Oh yeah, yeah. Did you remember any of the other foods besides uh, the lamb? Well, I remember the. Um, seems like there was an egg. I don't an know egg. What the egg was for. 
Interesting. I don't remember now, but I do remember like there. Yeah, if you look up the Seder plate, it'll actually you'll see all of them. Yeah. Just go, yep. yeah, search, yeah, go Google Seder plate, and it'll show you all the different pieces. Yep. You got the bitter herbs, you got the lamb, the egg, the matzah. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not sure what else. No challah. Or is that the matzah? <laughs> well, challah is the. Uh, uh, is that the Muslim? How they? No, uh, the challah. Oh yeah. No, no, okay, no. The matzah it, it, would be the, the, the challah, bread. not the challah. <laughs> <laughs> the challah is the bread. <laughs> and um, um, anyway, the um, so anyway, Ethan, uh, I hope that helps out. The uh, we already did that episode on the Lord's Supper part, and you know that, but it was a Passover meal. Yeah, yeah. Carrie, yeah the, he, bigger piece, the bigger piece here is you join a meal together with somebody else. It's very intimate. Yeah. Yes. You yeah. know, you, you can't sit down and enjoy a meal together with somebody and not become not have a conversation right. with them. Right. Yeah. So I think that's uh, the part of being able to have that fellowship over over the meal. This is, is and the really Lord's good. Supper was. Uh, a joyous time. It was. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. It was remembrance and all that. It became. It took a turn when yeah. Jesus <laughs> said, "I am. This is the the cup of, um, you know, my blood has been is going to be poured out for you." And they're like, "Boy, this just." Yeah. Died. You know, like, wait, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. What, what ha- what's going on? Someone's betraying you. What happened? But, uh, but other than that, it's a, it's a, it's a fun time. Yeah. And there's a lot of what, blessings. You know, whenever we, whenever we see Christ again, we're caught up together with him. What are we going to do? Yeah. Have we're going to have yeah. a feast, right? Yeah. We're going to have the marriage feast. So it's, yeah, it's going to be great. So then he ends it <laughs> off by saying, by the way, since you all have been a, uh, sharing a lot through your podcast. Here is something I got to share at church, and he shares a Facebook link. I don't know how we're going to share that to you listeners out there. I mean, maybe we could put it on the uh, description or something like that. But you can, or you can go to uh, is it Andrew Schrock's Facebook. Probably, it's probably going to be on Andrew's. Yeah. It depends on <laughs> if you want to see today, but it's going to be. If you want to see Ethan, likely. he has about a ten minute message, yeah. and uh, he was going to share it at the uh, nursing home, but uh, they were done when he showed up, so he <laughs> yeah. saved it for church. And so, all you ladies, you can go check out and see what it looks like. And uh, now, oh, yeah. just messing with just messing with you, Ethan. No, but he is single. Um, all right. Well, thanks. If you have a question, you want to email it's uh, talk at fellowshipofbelievers dot org. I think so. Right. Talk yes, at fellowshipofbelievers dot org. It doesn't have to be a question. It can be a comment, kind of like what Ethan just did, but uh, send those in, emails in. Yeah. Hey, if you have a question you want us to answer on the show, please just email us at talk at fellowshipofbelievers.org. That's talk at fellowshipofbelievers.org. Music with Sarah. What song do you like? All right, babe. This week, we've got a new song. It is a new song. Well, not really new. It's a fairly new song, but it's it's not going in the Wayback Machine this week. Nope. I think it came out in 2022. So I wonder if anybody out there is tracking. Probably not. Uh, according to the views on YouTube, <laughs> no one's tracking. Um, but, but I'm like, how many of the artists we have done on the show? Because this one... We've done a number of times. We have done this. And this is um, by Shane and Shane. Sure. And the song is called Oh But God. Oh But God. And it's on a single album called Oh But God. Shocking. They don't, <laughs> I don't think they do albums too much. Well, they do albums, but people, they do. you know, how many albums do they do? They probably just do songs. But anyway, they do yeah. come out with albums. They are prolific. They do. But um, they do a lot of covers. But this is actually one of theirs. This is. And... I like the title just to begin with. Okay. Um, oh, but God. Because it makes me think of in life, we have so many situations that feel hopeless and we're not sure what, what what's going to happen or whatever. And it always makes me think when, when I hear people say, you know, I'm not sure what's going to happen with this or whatever. I think, oh, but God. Right. Because... It's like those stories you hear of all these things and you're waiting for the but. Yeah. But what happened? Yeah. <laughs> but God. And that actually, it comes from, um, do you know where it comes from? No, actually, I don't. You don't. Okay, what well, comes Psalms. from? Psalms. No, nope. oh. it's a verse in Ephesians. I, I, <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> okay, Ephesians chapter 2 says, But God, who okay. is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. And sure. that's right after he says, um, he's talking about where we were mm-hmm. in the flesh and mm-hmm. in our conversations mm-hmm. in times past, whatever. Right. But... God, because of His mercy, absolutely, and He loved us. Change, that's changes most of everything. Our, that's most of our stories, right there, right? Yeah, we could we could have a shirt that said "But God," and um, uh, because we were going one direction, and then uh, now we're going another direction. Yeah, I just so, and what was in the middle? 
Oh, that, that was a t-shirt you liked, right? <laughs> I do like that shirt. Um, so it's really, it's the st- story of all of our lives if we're born well, how again. Do you know? How do you know my life? <laughs> Actually, you know my life. I do know your life. Um, it says, I was buried beneath my rebellion, lost without hope of redemption, blind in my need of a savior. Oh, oh but God. God. Crushed by the weight of my failure, living the lie I created, digging my grave without knowing. Oh, but God. And then the chorus just says, Rich in mercy, how you loved me, too much to let me stay lost. My salvation sent from heaven, nailing my sin to a cross. Oh, but God. Yep. And um, anyway, so I mean, I feel like it's it's the story of every believer. Is sure. We were lost. We were hopeless. We were, you know. We were a, on our way to hell. Right. But and, now we're on our way to heaven. And then God stepped in. And so <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I think it's... um. Uh, a fun, kind of a fun song. It is. And, it's um, an upbeat. It's fun, it, and it should be. It's one that gets in your head, and then all day you're just going to be singing, "Rich in mercy, how you love me." Like it just keeps going, and you just kind of can't stop. But um, and then it does have a bridge. It says, "All the wreckage of my choices, you have turned to life from ashes, lifted from death, risen with Him. Now I stand in confidence." And so, I don't know. I feel like it's actually um, has is it a an lot anthem of, song. I mean, oh. <laughs> I'd like to say that, but I know you make fun of me, so no, we won't I go with that. Anyway. <laughs> okay, that's true. Um, anyway, I feel like it just has so much truth. You know, yep. it's not um, it's not a Seven Eleven song. There's it's actually, not a Seven Eleven song. There's actually a number of words, but um, I feel like it's just like each thing. It's kind of poetic. Like um, I traded my chains for your freedom. I mean, you think about that. It's like wow, that's. I mean, but it's really true. Like, we were in bondage, and he sets us free. So, anyway, I I just think it makes me really happy. I think it's one people should put on their playlists and listen to. Yeah, go ahead. Put it on your playlist. In fact, where do you find it, babe? Um, Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, wherever. Right. It's it's Shane and Shane. Uh, Shane Everett and Shane Bernard, right? Yep. But Shane and Shane, and it's called Oh But God. Yep. Right? Yep. Okay. The Mike Charleston Show. Marriage. All right, babe, we are counting slowly down from 10 to 1, and this is number 8. These are the top 10 issues facing marriage and family today, according yep. to family, uh, no, uh, what was it, according, according to? I kind of forget. Christian Life, Family Life, what was that bookstore? Lifeway, Lifeway, Lifeway Research. There <laughs> it you was go. Lifeway. That's what it was. So it was, according to Lifeway Research, they did uh, this poll, and uh, these were the top ten, and we are down to number eight. Number eight. I, mean, I feel like Casey Kasem on the final eight. We are counting down. Number eight is negative media influences. Negative. I like how they put that. Well, you know, of course it's going to be negative. Yeah, because if there were good media influences, they probably the aren't issues. wreaking havoc on your family <laughs> right. or your marriage. So there are a lot of negative. Media influences, and I feel like we've done a show on this recently. We so did. I mean, uh, we did a show basically on social media issues yeah. and things like that in the family and how they are impacting uh, raising kids and things like that. I don't know if we did a whole show on it, but we did something on it recently. Yeah. Uh, don't even remember what we've done. But negative influences are going to be the, one of the top issues facing family. And I'm, I'm assuming this is going to move up on the list as the years go by. Oh, I'm sure. Because media, it, it, the influence of the media is tremendous because now it's everywhere you go. Right. It used to be you just come home, flip on the TV, which was bad enough, and it just be on all day. But now it's in your pocket. And not only that, it's interactive. It's It asks you to be a part. So right. with the social media, and um, uh, which can be good or bad. And same thing with YouTube and, and things like that, Facebook and Twitter and TikTok and things like that. There are actually good things that can happen on those things, you know, p- yeah. part of social media and just media in general, there are good things, but there are also plenty of bad things. And if you're not aware of those bad things, that's the, that's the danger. Right. Well, and it, when it comes to marriage specifically, I feel like there's, there's something for everybody is the problem when yep. it comes to media, because I might feel like, okay, well, I'm not really interested in that, or I'm not interested in that, but there's going to be a pull somewhere for each of us. Sure. And so I feel like, you know, this is one that really will affect every every couple, and then it affects you with your kids for sure. Because as your kids get older, and you feel like you need to give them a little freedom or a little something, and it's I mean, it's just it's well, all consuming. Funny story: we just our our daughters went to uh, driver's ed. 
<laughs> and I guess this is how far we are in the past or something. I, I, I don't know. It hasn't been an issue in our home. Our kids haven't wanted a phone necessarily right now, but we have... Um, uh, they were the only ones in their class without a phone. Yeah, it was 34 kids. It was 34 a huge kids, class. And they were like, take out your phones and put Kahoot on your phone and we're going to play a game. And they're like, we don't have a phone. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, that's right. Uh, usually when they start driving, we usually get our kids a phone or something like that. Yeah, so, there has to be a legitimate need. Right. And we haven't had that yet. So anyway. Right, Oops. but that that was kind of funny, and I'm like, hey, we're actually talking about that this week. But whatever you decide, you have to decide that for your family, and sometimes that changes. It depends on the kid, depends on the situation. Maybe you went a little too early on an older kid, and you want to pull back a little bit more, or maybe you went too late on a, on a kid, and you, you, you want to give a little bit more freedom. It, th- this is an issue, just media in general. We are consuming media in a way we've never consumed. We, we have cord, cord cutters, mm-hmm. which is like what we were hoping for a long time ago, you know, no more uh, um, uh, cable. And, but now it's like you, you can subscribe to just everything that you want. Everything is tailored to what you want. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to spend all the money and get all the the negative things, but spending time with it is going to be an issue. You have to decide just because it's good doesn't mean it make it right Right. all the time. So it's, it's, you have to learn to discern and what you're consuming. Uh, there, we met a guy at the film festival when we went with Rebecca and, uh, when her movie made it to the film festival, uh, we talked to media talk. Is that what it was? We're actually Mm going to try to interview him for the show. And uh, my wife keeps bugging me about that. And, uh, I think his name's Telfer. Something yeah. like that. And he just came out a book and had a book out and was coming out with a program to help navigate uh, some of those waters that parents are in with kids and, and media, social media and, and media in general. And uh, I don't know, maybe we can leave a link or something to that book or whatever. I, yeah. I, I don't know if it's any good, but uh, I was flipping through some of the materials when we were there and it seemed to be fine. I mean, it's just a resource. Uh, right. You can't just go there for the answers for everything, but it, you need to think about these things because these things are in your face, and and if you don't get it under control, then uh, then it'll control you. Yeah. That's for sure. I mean, I can definitely see that these are huge issues in every family, and even if you have rules and you've thought through everything, well, what what's out there a year from now will be totally different. So it's something that has to continually be looked at and, you know, considered. And as far as, you know, I think for wives out there, I think so often we are so worried about controlling our husbands. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, when you, when I think, when I look at this negative media influences, I have to look at my own life and I have to consider, okay, what's, what am I allowing in my life? What's shaping the way that I'm thinking about different things? Because I can't control what you do. It's not my, it's not for me to do. So I need to look at myself and think of, you know, what's, what's good and what's right and what's honoring God. Well, and when it comes to our kids also, I mean, there are worldview things being pushed in the media. Now, when we were kids, we didn't have to worry about that. There was other issues, don't get me wrong, but like the transgender and all these other kind of issues that are on the forefront now, we never had to deal with. You know, it was when we were a kid, it was more like a a sideshow joke, you know, it was a sideshow issue and it was usually as in jest or something like that. Ha ha. Now it's serious. They are purposely targeting your children Mm -hmm. for specific things. And it's not just transgenderism. You know, it's, it could be any philosophies of this world and we need to be very careful about the philosophies of this world if we want to raise our kids um, in a Christian way. And the best thing to help that is the truth. Right. You know, live live your life out in front of your kids and enjoy in peace and uh, that's attractive and you you come up with different things that you can do together. Like even last night we we were playing the Wii. Mm-hmm. Uh, we weren't planning that to to talk about on the show, but you know, it's like hey, we we did that as a fa- it's a family thing and we can sit there and, and play together. We don't do it that often. Right. But it, every once in a while, it's okay to and indulge. I think sometimes we either get too scared and we cut off everything mm-hmm. or we're nervous that we're going to be weirdos like us at the driving school and be the only ones without cell phones. So we allow everything. Right. And both are bad. Mm-hmm. You know, we do have to, there can be good and there definitely is bad and we have to be aware of though. And it's just our job to be aware. 
and yeah. be aware of the apps that are out there and the, the social networks that our kids are part of. And and because uh, we don't want as what we don't want as a family is living together in the same house but living different lives. Mm-hmm. And we are a family, and we want to bring be close to each other. And there can be a we we all have seen that those pictures and those videos where everyone is just sitting on the couch in the same room, but they're in their own world. Yeah. There, I'm looking up something else. You're looking up something else. The kids are looking up. So we're just in our own world. That's not family. That's not, right. you know, I'm not saying that you, that can't happen. We've, we've had that happen at our house before. So it, it has happened, but it's, it shouldn't be the normal thing. Yeah. And that's what I see nowadays when I go into people's homes and stuff, that everyone is so independent right. and uh, there's no sense of family anymore almost. So we yeah. have to be very, that is a very, very important thing. Well, um, I think not even just the... I mean, like you say, it's very important. And of course, the sin aspect and keeping them from the sure. world's worldview. But um, also just the, the, you need to have what everybody else has. Sure. It just makes me think of the Stanley Cup thing. And I'm like, I don't know where that came from. Right. I don't know. They've been around forever, but all of a sudden, everybody's got to have one. And so if you have little kids, I would encourage you to go get, um, it's a book called If Only I Had a Green Nose by Max if Licato. If Only I Had a Green Nose. Okay, and we are going just, off script I'm here. I'm just saying... That because it's like this week it's Stanley Cup. Next week I don't know what it'll be, but mm-hmm. the, it's a book for little kids and it tells you all about you know like this week is a green nose. That's what I gotta everybody have had the cool to have. thing. I yeah. gotta be in. I gotta so be cool. I right. just kind of laugh because I'm like guys, like this is an age old thing and we're we're stuck on it. Right. So right. anyway, it's a cup, man. <laughs> It's a cup. So, all right. Well, that's that's what we have for this week. And next week we'll tackle number seven. The Mike Charleston Show. History with Larry. All right, Larry. <laughs> All right. You hit the spot. You did. So, you yeah. timed it perfect. I, I am curious to know. Sarah knows what this one is. This she does, yeah. Because you guys were waiting in the orthodontist room together. Larry. Yeah. Ah! Yeah. 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 <laughs> and uh, anyway, so what do we got today? Well, this is kind of an odd story. Okay. But it's a story of... Uh, a lovely lady? No, oh. uh, but uh, no. about um, overcoming, in a sense. and um, Being overcome or overcoming? Well, kind of both. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and, well, and it's a miracle, the, the miracles of what the human body can endure. Oh, like wow. a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the lady who fell out of the plane. And yes. Survived. Sure. Well, this guy, his name is Phineas Gage. Phineas Gage, already yeah. liking him. Yeah. Uh, he didn't invent anything. He was not a social warrior. He's not a great writer so of any sort. He's just a dude. He's a He's jag. just an ordinary guy. Just a guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. But he has an extraordinary recovery story. Oh. So he also became the subject of many debates about the brain and its role in personality mm. and played a role in deve- the developing science of neurology. Really? Yeah. So Phineas. Phineas Gage. So. He was born on July 9th in 1823 in Gafton County, New Hampshire. Okay. So, nothing. Grew up on a farm. Learned to work with explosives. Oh, boy. Might be a hint right there. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Usually you don't throw that in there. Yeah. <laughs> I grew up without explosives. Yeah. So, he also, that helped him get a job on the railroad. Okay. He became a blasting foreman. Oh, that is for not railroad good. Cons- yeah. yeah, railroad construction. It's a dangerous job. So one of the things the blasting foreman would do, he'd have a tamping rod. Yep. And they would bore like a small hole into a rock or whatever, put the explosive down in there. Usually dynamite, right? Well, they'd have, yeah, dynamite or a powder explosive. Black powder, something. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. they put it in there, put a fuse down there, and then right. pack it full of, <laughs> well, no, they pack it full of, Sand and dirt and stuff, okay, and sure. use the tamping rod. Gotcha. To uh, tamp it down, make it tight, because they want to direct the blast. Uh, well, of course. So if they, because if they didn't, then the it take the past at least resistance and blow out the hole and not do the job. So oh, so they pack everything down in there to keep the you know direct the explosion. Sure, sure. He was so good at his job. He had a custom tamping rod made. It was, it was about three and a half feet tall. This is important because okay. you'll see later. Okay. His tamping what did he rod. Call his tamping rod. It was iron. It's about an inch and a quarter diameter. What was the name of his company? Like uh, I, Maxi a, tamping no, rods. No, I, I don't. A blacksmith made it for okay. him, and so, and it was 
most of them were flat on both ends. His was pointed so like a javelin. So you could use a hammer? Well, he could use it as a pick type thing. Okay, sure, 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 sure. Break sure. apart okay. rocks because the pointed side. Okay. And then the other side was flat for packing dirt down. I think they said both sides were flat. No, that was the standard. Oh, gotcha. But, so he was the only one to think about using a pointed edge? Well, right. Well, uh, because okay. most of the time you didn't really need the pointed part, but he wanted a custom one, so no. he, Why not? he made it. Everything's normal. He's working. They're in, uh, I think it was some part of New York, they're working. September 13th, that Uh-oh. should have been. I don't know if it was a Friday or not. I didn't. I should have gone back oh, and looked. That would have been interesting. But it was in, in 1848. Life for him changed. Oh. Completely. Everything's normal. They're working. It's kind of the day's going like routine. He, they bore a hole in a rock. You know, the routine. He's Just another against. boring day. But as he's tamping things down, it wasn't quite full. And he turned to talk to oh, some of his never men. never talked to someone. And his tamping rod hit oh. the rock, caused a spark, and boom. boom. And he's right there. He's John right on the there. spot. The tamping rod went through the left side of his face near the temporal mandibular joint. I think joint. I've heard about this guy. Went right through the, through the yes. behind his left eye, right through the top of his yep. skull. And it landed about 80 feet away. He was thrown off the ground, landed on his back, and... Started convulsing. Well, maybe it was because of the point in his, his specialty that helped save his life That's there. it. That, that was one of the theories is because if it had been blunt on that end. It, it would have just smashed his head like a watermelon. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But because of that point, it made a clean path. And Not that that helped too but much. No, but um, everybody thought he was dead. Yeah, well, of course. And they saw him, his body kind of convulse. And then, and then he sat up. It's and said, next job. No, they actually, <laughs> he walked, They he, with some a little bit of assistance, they walked him to a cart, an ox cart, and he rode to the hotel. But one story I read. He hasn't been bleeding out. To the hotel out. or to the hospital? A hotel where he was staying at. What in the world? Like, go to the hospital. <laughs> well, this was 1823 or whatever uh, it was, uh, 1840 uh, something. 1840, yeah. yeah. Um, he, he was writing notes and stuff as they're writing to the hotel. He was conscious and everything. And in fact, when the doctor got to the hotel, he's sitting on the front porch of the hotel talking. And the doctor was amazed, of course. With but, a hole in his head? Yeah. Two of them. One on this, you know. Uh, <laughs> you think um, he'd be bleeding like a stock pig there. Uh, yeah, you, you'd think. Um, later that did happen. But uh, the, doctor, the doctor could actually see his brain pulsating inside in the hole on oh, the top man. of his head. So if you like oh. blue and Ooh, what's yeah. this doc? <laughs> uh, there I won't go into some of the other details about oh, the that, the stuff, but that's what you're talking about. There are actually some brain matter that came out when he started he actually started vomiting on the porch and well, yeah I would and brain matter came out of the hole because of the pressure and yeah. So he didn't die right there. No, in fact, um, they dressed the wound as best they could, clean it, and they wrapped it, put it. They they were the, there were two doctors that ended up helping. They were able to shave his head and put some uh, adhesive strips on it, leave openings for something like that, I guess, and then put a headdress. And they put an Indian thing on him. Something like that. Yeah, <laughs> that's what he, the pictures I saw. But um, they everybody thought he they expected him. To to die. Yeah, well, sure. And um, he he thought he was going back to work the next day. <laughs> this guy is a trooper. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I mean, I'm not missing a day. He should work for the post office. I know. <laughs> Rain um, or sleet or snow or explosions. It was a couple of days later. No way. Yeah. Um, he kind of slipped into a semi comatose state and he was in that state for like a little days. delayed reaction or something yeah in fact well they everybody thought he was going to die so they had his grave clothes ready they had Come a casket on. made for him <laughs> wow and uh tombstone here you go yeah. man. um <laughs> uh, but he uh after 10 days in a comatose state he was able to sit up on his own and then he started walking around in the hospital and then after a couple months he went home to his parents farm back in new hampshire where he continued his recovery, and this is uh, the way. Yeah. he got to where he could work a half day on the farm, okay. doing some farm chores and stuff, and then it wasn't long before he was putting in a full day and back to work. And it was about a year later, the same doctor that saw him went back to check on him and was amazed that he made a pretty much a full recovery. 
and it's crazy. Yeah, it's just so bizarre. He, um, a lot of myths and stuff are, were around him that he had a personality change. He was a completely different oh, person, sure. and but most of those are just myths. They yeah. weren't true at all. Uh, his mom said that he did have some issues with his memory, and he well, kind of had. Some of it came out. I mean, <laughs> I know it's, it's like he had a um, sort of a childlike. Um, demeanor about him, according to his mother. But mm. most of that uh, went away. And he and eventually moved down to Chile, started a stagecoach company. In with, Chile? In Chile, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why he went down there, but I guess money, whatever. whatever. But yeah. uh, he was there for about eight years. And then his health started failing. So Because mm. he was in Chile. Well, yeah. They don't know if it was because of the injury of his head or... I'm going to say yes. Well, it could have been because of the exposure to the weather and stuff. Well, that's part of the the injury to the head, right? right? (laughs) Well, but the harsh conditions of a stagecoach driver. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, Yeah. so he moved up to California. His mother and sister had moved to California by this time. And uh, when he got there... for the... uh, Well, I guess it's past the gold rush. Yeah, yeah. it's past. Mm -hmm. But uh, he ended up... His health just went downhill from there and he ended up dying. He yeah. started getting um, convulsions, seizures and stuff. And he he died yeah. on May, I think it was uh, May 21st, 1860. So it was about 12 years after the accident. Wow. He survived. Wow. His, this is the kind of a weird thing. His skull, the, the doctor that initially treated him, one of the doctors asked the family if he could, if he could have his skull. And they said yes. And I know it sounds kind of weird. It is a little weird. <laughs> but they used it for research. Sure. And to see where, you know, the path of the rod and all that and what part of the brain it was. And um, it really did help a lot of research and, wow. the, and the brain. That's, and, a rod is huge. I mean, come on, man. That yeah. is, that's crazy. I mean, it's about an inch and a quarter yeah. diameter. Yeah. And steel. so, yeah, he... Uh, the, in fact, the rod and his skull were put on permanent display at the Harvard Medical School. Wow. At, uh, Warren Anatomical Museum in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Sweet. So, yeah, he uh, he did contribute yeah. to science. and There you go. But what an amazing story. <laughs> just, yeah, I have heard of that. I remember yeah. hearing about that uh, somewhere. Um, didn't remember his name. And all that, but I do, as you're going through, I do remember that the rod went through someone's head, uh, just like someone recently was interviewed for a crime, whatever, he got shot in the eye and was interviewed during the whole, you know, and finally realized that he actually got shot in the eye and a (laughs) bullet was in his brain, but he, he ended up having some brain damage from it, but was able to function for a while. So yeah, brains are, brains are kind of amazing, man. Yeah. Well, one of the things they discovered was that he lost mostly what's called white matter instead of gray matter in the brain. Oh, well, those gray cells and, are important. Right. And the, so because of that, that's partly why he had such a, uh, I guess, a... Normal recovery? Yeah, normal <laughs> right. recovery and norm, lived a normal life. Sure. I mean, that's just... I, I was like, that's amazing. And I mean, when you look at it medically and what actually happened... It's kind of gross, but oh, yeah. it's still pretty yeah. amazing. But. No, it, it is amazing. So, all right. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, uh, you know, if you got a hole in your head, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's still a chance for you. <laughs> you, have, you have a chance for yep. sure. Hey, this is Joshua Charleston, the producer of The Mike Charleston Show. Thank you for listening to the show. If you want to follow us, we're on Facebook at Mike Charleston Show and Instagram at underscore Mike Charleston Show. Please support us on Patreon for exclusive content. This episode is over, but if you want more, check out the website at fellowshipofbelievers.org for more information. The Mike Charleston Show has been brought to you by Fellowship Believers.